the Chainlink node software forms the heart of the Chainlink decentralized Oracle networks. Chainlink oracles provide data and capabilities when and where you need it on the blockchain. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today we're going to be taking a look at the recent 1.1 release of the Chainlink node software. All right, so first up, let's take a look at one of the most exciting additions in the 1.1 release of the Chainlink node software. So here we are in the operator interface, and I'm going to go directly to the top here and click on chains. And this is kind of where the magic is. So historically, all of the configuration for one of your chains that you want to connect your node to was in an environments file. But now that we support multiple chains, we can't store those configuration variables in the environments file anymore. And so now you're going to be expected to do that either via the GUI of the operator interface or via the command line interface. So we can go in, we can see now that we have multiple chains configured in our operate in our node. And you can see that we've got a different configuration for each of the chains, which is kind of a, a magical moment in using the Chainlink Oracle software. The second change that I want to show off a little bit is a little bit behind the scenes. So let's dive over to our environments file in the node configuration. Uh, and we're going to see a few new things. So if you use the log level option when managing your node, uh, you already know about things like info, error, etc. But now there's been a new addition called critical or crit, uh, as you'd put here. And so what this allows you to do is really just reduce the log level down to issues that are a little bit more severe than errors that are likely to require your intervention very soon. The second thing that I want to call it here in the configuration is this brand new option, Sentry DSN. So Sentry is a third party service that allows you to monitor the production operation of software systems. And by setting up your Sentry DSN within your node, what's going to actually happen is all of the events and errors that happen within your node are going to automatically be sent to Sentry so that you can view them in a central place, you can create alerting, and you can manage them much more easily. The final feature I want to show off is multi-factor authentication to increase the security of your node. So if you take a look in the UI and click on the little icon in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see this new option for register MFA token. So if you want to understand how to set this up, just go ahead, hop over to the Chainlink documentation uh, under the configuring nodes option. You're going to see all of these options for configuring multi-factor authentication. Effectively just set the fully qualified domain name where the UI is being served from as well as the origin URL where the requests are going to initiate from. Uh, and once you've done that, you can actually just configure your second factor authentication uh, directly in the UI. Obviously, this has been a very brief tour of the 1.1 software release. If you want to know everything that's going into one of these changes, definitely check out the full change log on GitHub. It's got all of the details, all of the nitty gritty changes that have been made under the hood in this latest release. In the last few minutes, you've seen some of the coolest features in the 1.1 release of the Chainlink node software. You've gotten a glimpse into the future of multi-chain, and we've seen how we've made it easier to manage your node and to make it more secure. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>